That Buffalo Sabres team is truly one of the worst teams of the last 30 years in the Dude, NHL. You're not kidding. They're they're one of the worst teams ever. Couldn't think of a worse situation in the NHL. It's an absolute disaster. Buffalo is having the worst season. You, we forget, like, Jack Eichel's not even playing. Like, there are two goalies, two starting goalies, not even available. Like What about the kid, Jamie? What about the kid? I watched that Darlene in Buffalo, and I'm like, next Nick Lidstrom, here we go. Dominate from the back end. Turn around the organization. He is so bad out there right now, he's ruining himself. Yo, what is going on, guys? Burn the Boats back with another series, and today we are going to be rewriting history with the Buffalo Sabres in honor of their tremendous success as of late and uh, the fact that Jack Eichel wants to get out of Dodge and they lost Taylor Hall and their best player is now, I guess, Jeff Skinner. So we're going to be playing as a uh, as the GM of the Buffalo Sabres back in NHL 14, which is where everything kind of went wrong for, for the Sabres. They started off having... You know, a couple first round exits in the playoffs uh, in, in the early 2010s. And then uh, in 11-12, they missed the playoffs by three points. Uh, the following year, they missed by seven. And then in, in this year here, NHL 14, so the year 13-14, uh, they were dead last by 14 points with a record of 21, 51, and 10. So we're going to rewrite that script, or attempt to anyway, by making um, several roster moves and rebuilding the team a little bit uh, and, and simming through a couple seasons to see if we can bring them back to the playoffs and kind of break this, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten year, however many years it's been, I think a ten year drought now uh, of just not making it. So let's dive right in. All right, so I'm leaving everything fairly, fairly, uh, similar to what it was before. I'm not really changing anything. Uh, difficult thing, I'm gonna leave it on All-Star because I have a, f a feeling that, um, if I remember correctly, in NHL 14, the simming difficulty in games was uh, was actually ridiculous. And regardless of the moves you made, it, was, it wasn't very realistic. You would just lose every game. So leaving it on All-Star, I think, is, is kind of what we're gonna, we're gonna stick with. All right, and we're gonna be Going over the roster, seeing uh, seeing what was what they had to work with back in in, in this glorious season of 2013-14, uh, and see if we can make any changes right off the bat. So these are going to be uh, what I assume the issue is going to be. Like we're going to be starting the season now at the preseason stage, so there will be some some big free agent names. Um, and I want to kind of play this as realistic as possible without just, you know, throwing money at all the big studs and, uh, and rebuilding that way. So our goal right now is to rebuild by drafting young talent uh, with good contracts that can kind of stick around for seasons to come and not worry so much about winning now. We're jumping right in. First things first, we're going to take a look at the contracts that we have on the squad here. So contract page let's see what we got to work with oh my god some of these names okay so we have Thomas Vanek he's 29 years old here so still relatively young um, only one year left on his deal at 7 mil Tyler Myers I think we have yeah oh boys okay sign for for five or so years at 5.5 .5, so that's a, that's a decent first deal Drew Stafford locked in for two more. Uh, Steve Ott, one more. Okay, Christian Erhoff. Wow, locked in forever. Locked in up until this year. He would still be a member of the Buffalo Sabres. And he's 31. What a horrible contract that is. Cody Hodgson, 23 years old. One more year RFA. That's fine. Vili Lano we have for a couple of years still. That's great. Okay. Tyler Ennis, 23 years old, RFA. McBain, Felino, our UFAs. Uh, Mike Weber, 1.6, a good depth defenseman. Keep around for three years. Okay, so far, nothing too gruesome. Nathan Gerby, one year UFA. Kyle Porter, or Kevin Porter, fourth line guy. Um, 
for a league minimum. Grigorenko, I think this was the early stages of his contract. Yeah, he's got two before his RFA status is up. Uh, Patrick Coletta with us for a couple of years. I mean, John Scott. Wow, 30 years old. Okay. So in terms of our skaters, we're, uh, we got some, some good contracts here. Um, let anybody who's a UFA in 2014, like John Scott, probably not going to re-sign him next year. Uh, Porter, we'll see how the year plays out. Nathan Gerby. I've always been a fan of Gerby because of his speed, but he's a little guy. making uh, Not making much here, so, so probably a guy you want to keep around for a bit. Steve Ott, I mean, look. Back in 2014, this might have been a great player to have on your team. You know, a, a tough guy that can, you know, scrap. I don't know if he's necessarily the uh, the solution right now for, for this team. And then Thomas Vanek, like he's your he's your big stud. But, you know, do you really – the the cap in 2014 was 64.8 mil. So roughly like 16 mil less than what it is in today's NHL. Um, so for him to be making seven mil seems like the equivalent of you know a ten million dollar contract, eleven million dollar contract, off the top of my head here. So not sure that's really what you want to look at, and he's probably going to be asking for something similar at the end of the year, considering you know his high overall rating and his and his age. So let's take a look at our goalies. Uh, Ryan Miller, UFA at the end of the year. Jonas Enroth, good backup. Got him locked in for two years, and then Matt Hackett uh, for one, who's still relatively young. So, you know, maybe a good backup option. So that's what we got in terms of contracts. So if I look at our contracts, we have a ton of centers, okay? A ton of centers to, to work with, almost twice as many as we need. And then our left wingers, we got five. But our right wingers, we only got two. So rather than having guys kind of playing at different positions, I'd rather just solidify the right side. And right now, Patrick Coletta is a third, fourth line scrapper kind of guy. Drew Stafford is a stud. So he's, he's our number one right winger for sure. Uh, here, I mean, oops, uh, okay, Vanek, Lano, Felino, Gerby. Like, do you really want Gerby on your fourth line? I guess you can move them over to the right side. Um, but let's see if there are any right wingers we can maybe uh, get signed here. And free agency, is there anybody that can improve our team right now? Um, to be fair, do we really want to improve right now is the question. We might want to just stock up on draft picks. I, look, Vinny LeCavalier wants one year at six mil. We have the cap space for him. But then our hands are tied and we're not, you know, we're not trying to win the cup this year. So probably not the wisest choice. Uh, same with Derek Roy. I mean, you know, these guys are a little bit on the older side. It, it never hurts to add a depth defenseman. Um, but let's see here. You know, Iginla, 36 years old, 3 mil. I don't think that's the move. Um, let's take a look at just red wingers. Michael Ryder, 33 years old. Brad Boys. Yaga, 41 years old. Pretty cheap, though. Danny Briere. I'm almost thinking for 2 mil, getting a scoring right winger for one year in your top six. Let's see. Let's offer Briere. A one-year deal. Let's round up to, to yeah. Let's, let's give him this. See if he takes it. Fill in the top six a little bit. Uh, it's nothing special. I don't think he's gonna put up you know amazing numbers. And then on D, is there anyone here worth a look? Oh, the Whip Dog. The Whip Dog would be way too expensive. Sorry, Whip, but uh, nah, 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 nah. Put some 28 years old, two mil, can fit nicely on the back end. Fairly young still. Let's do it. We're gonna offer him, uh, try to shore up our, 
our blue line here. I'll go up to uh, just up a bit in, in, in case there's any competition here. So so I think that'll round up our, our team here. Let's uh, We'll sim through the preseason because none of it really matters. We'll see if these guys take the deal. I need that. Um, Klitsam accepts the offer. Briere accepts the offer. Wonderful. We're not even going to worry about lineups right now. Let's just get through this uh, the preseason. I'll be happily surprised if you make the playoffs, but won't be angry if you if you don't. Uh, like I said, I'm not looking to I'm not looking to have too big of a season. I want to I want to build for the future here. So uh, that's I think that's fine here. Waivers take effect. Isn't it? Okay. I don't think this matters. So, I mean, this is kind of nice. You know, you start the year off, all the signings are taken care of. I don't have to worry about pending UFAs until next year. So, if I'm looking at my roster, I'm thinking I want to shore up the, maybe the, the backup goalie position. Okay, so let's take a look at our lines here. Man, having Steve Ott as your first line right winger, where are my new players? I need to bring up, I don't know why they went directly to the AHL roster, but let's bring up Rier. Okay, I gotta send guys down. So, Vanek, Hotch, and Briere. That's fine. Stafford is a, isn't he a natural right winger? What are we doing, coach? Bring him over to the right side. Actually put him on the first line. Briere on our second line. That was the initial plan. So Ennis is an actual center. Gerby is a left winger, so that's fine. So our top six is fairly figured out. Now, Felino is a left wing. Lino is a left wing. Ott is a centerman. And Porter is a centerman. Um, Steve Ott, man. He's an 83, but he's a grinder. Maybe we bring him up. Felino's. oh man. I'm thinking maybe... I mean, Ott is a fourth line guy, to be honest. I... I don't see the, I mean, he should be here to be honest, I think, and give Grigorent go the center. I think we go with this to start. I think that's fine. And then unfilled, we put in Klitsum. I kind of like this first pairing, but I'm thinking maybe we go Klitsum, so you have an offensive and defensive. We put Myers, where McBain is. Maybe we swap these guys. I think I think we do this for now. Uh, I like this. Okay, four forwards on the on PP one. Uh, we should get Briere in here. So maybe take him out, put in Briere, and then put. I'm thinking maybe we go. Okay, Steve Ott should not even be there to be honest. Brutal. <laughs> what am I looking at here? Um, so Stafford on the point, Ennis, Hodgson, Vanek, Felino. Ott. I mean, hey. Give give the kids some uh, give the kids some ice time. Not Coletta, that was a mistake. Let's put Grigorenko on, on PP2 to start the season. See how he does. And then uh, our goalies are are in line. Not all. Oh, what the hell just happened? Oh, four on four lines unfilled. Four on four. Put in put in Danny B. No, that's you need a D here. Put in. Uh, Put in uh, the new guy. Excellent. Okay, so that gets us set up for uh, the start of the season here. Let's see how this goes. So uh, strategy. Let's take a quick look at strategy. I want to have, I want to have an aggressive setup here. So let's go. Yeah, I like the idea of pushing on the four check, feeding the defenseman. Offensive pressure, aggressive. Defensive pressure, don't need to go. Let's just go normal on D. Uh, I don't want to collapse. I think staggered's the way to go. Penalty box, okay. This is fine, we're going umbrella. PP, I want the carry for puck possession. Okay, and then all the, okay, these guys are our skilled guys. So they could do a behind the net play. I want to see a carry. I want to see shots. Actually, maybe more of a cycle here. Um, efficiency. Don't block too many shots. Then our second line. I want to see an overload. Also carrying the puck in. More shots on net. Uh, right down the middle. Right down the middle. 
I want my third line to be crashing the net. Maybe a bit more dumping of the puck. All shots on net. A little bit more energy. They could block some shots. And then fourth line, crash the net. Dump and chase. Shoot the puck. And let's let's focus on the uh, conservative energy or hustle play with higher intensity. Yeah, yeah you're, you're all fire all the time. Um, our Ds, a little bit more of a pinch. I want to see some shooting. I want to see shooting and I want to see shooting. That's it. Shooting from the Ds. Slower uh, back end on the third pair. Money. Strategies are golden. Not sure how effective the strategies are in game. Uh, but now we go ahead and we simulate the first month of the season and see how, uh, how our first uh, 10 or so games go. All right, boys, so after our first month, we finish off 4-4-1, four, four, and one, which is actually better than I anticipated. Let's take a look at uh, the stats, the standings, see where we stand for the time being. So team standings within the Eastern Conference, we currently stand in 12th with 9 points. Playoffs are 2 points in front of us. Still a long way to go in the season, though, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Let's check out player stats. Um, and also, something about this game, they don't actually show you when a guy gets injured, they only show you when he comes back. So we might only find out about guys missing games after a while. I had to uh, to put Nathan Gerby in at some point. So he was injured based on games played. Uh, McBain was injured for a bit, okay. John Scott, he's only subbed in. Everyone else seems to have been relatively healthy. So in nine games, Vili Lino, uh, one goal, six assists. Okay. Stafford, one goal, six assists. Steve Ott, four goals. What the hell? What the heck is this? Grigorenko off to a good start with five points in nine games. And then our, our D helping out, two and three. Polino, two and two. Vanek, three and one. A little slow to, to, you know, to get the season going. He's supposed to be our scoring guy. So keep an eye on that for sure. Um, if we don't get enough production out of Vanek, I think maybe we trade him before the uh, at the trade deadline for for some uh, some pieces. Tyler Ennis, three goals. I mean, look, relatively good scoring lines here. Like our, I mean, Briere. That's what is this? That is extremely upsetting. Briere, what are you doing, my guy? You're in the top six. You only got one apple. Gerby, one apple. Is this? Is it? Is our second line the problem here? Oh my god. So, Enroth, three games. What? One loss. So I guess he, he jumped in for, for a couple games where Miller got pulled. Miller is four and three. Oh, sh yeah, okay. So, wait, what? Four, three, and an OT loss. Okay, 92-18 save percentage, one shutout. I mean, listen, could be worse, right? Goals against average of 244 is not is not bad. Your GM options, where, where are my injuries? John Scott needs to be, well, that's fine. You're not playing, buddy. And he's got uh, stomach cramps, apparently, so. Way to toughen up for us, bud. All right, here we go. We're gonna sim it out now until December. All right, boys, so we finished the month of November off, and I guess the first two of December with a record of 12, 9, and 3, which is, again, much better than I anticipated. I did not expect uh, to have a plus five, a, a, a record over 500 at this point of the season already. Uh, nice little three-win game, three-game win streak here, followed up by a three-game losing streak. Um, you know, we're fairly inconsistent, but at least we're getting... Uh, some, some relatively positive results here. So let's take a look at where we stand uh, within the league. Uh, so we are currently in eighth, holding on to that last playoff spot. Detroit running away with it. Um, they're still in their in their glory years, I guess, with, uh, with a, a stacked roster. Boston not too far behind. And then, uh, you know, 
I guess the, the usual suspects up top, Columbus, New Jersey Islanders. So we're we're kind of, you know, we're we're in the mix. We're in the mix. Philly's fallen off fairly quickly, I'd say. Toronto as well, only 16 points in 24 games. Um, and this, I believe, is the year after the collapse to Boston. So they're definitely in a rebuild. Ottawa, no surprise there. They've been in exactly this type of situation for 10 years now as well. They're, they're the same in, in the same train as the Sabres. Um, okay, so, I mean, look, again, playoffs are not the main focus here. But at least uh, it's, it's nice to kind of paint a picture of what the league looks like and know where we stand. In terms of our boys and where our guys are at, look, man, Briere, all you're getting is that I don't know what's going on with him. I don't think that was a, a great addition to the team, finally. Potion, 8-8, eight and eight, 60, that's, you know, not great. We're not getting much production is, is the issue. Um, Tyler Myers is buzzing out there. Ennis has picked it up. Vanek has picked it up in the goal department. Um, Lano kind of back to earth a little bit. Christian Erhoff buzzing around. Ott also back to earth a little bit. Still doing fairly well though. Uh, Stafford, okay, little, he's been injured. Oh no. He had 10 points in 13 games and it looks like he's been missing a bit. So we'll check on that. Felino holding his own. Briere, kind of a disappointing month. Better than the first one, but still disappointing. Especially when you're, you know, one of your defensive defensemen comes in and has as many points as you do in the same amount of games. Rigorenko has stalled a little bit. Not much coming from him. Um, Gerby, man, what what is this guy doing? He's in a contract year, isn't he? What is he doing? Hey, we got some trade bait, boys. Put him on the trade bait board. Him and uh, and maybe Vanek are gonna be. I don't think Vanek is uh, is a part of the future here, man. I'm. I mean, he's doing okay now. He's had a better month. Uh, we'll see. And then uh, our goalie is still holding down the four, 11, six, one and two for for Ryan Miller. Not bad at all, to be honest. Uh, Enroth not really pulling his weight back there as much as I would like. 2.09 goals against. Okay, okay. Save percentage 93.3. I, I, I'm I'm fond of Miller. I'm fond of Miller. I'm wondering if we, you know what? I say we explore a potential mid-season trade for a backup goaltender. So I'd be looking for a goalie who, you know is still relatively young, is a backup in the city that he's in, and could come in here and, you know, lay down the law a little bit and, uh, and give give our boy Miller some rest and some pressure depending on what's needed. Uh, so, I mean, McDonald losing record, get out of my face, I don't want to see ya. Uh, Peters and Ward, they got a good little tandem going on here. Um, You know what? Let's go to the trade page. Maybe it'll also show me uh, what they make. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not in uh, in shakeup territory by by any means. But uh, I'm just thinking, you know, a team that let's say wants to trade away a goalie. Let's go goalies. Yeah, let's do that and see if anyone's getting rid of anyone. So. Hutchinson, as a Leafs fan, I hate this man, and I do not want to see him on my roster. Um, so we're probably looking at, I mean, yeah, teams are going to be getting rid of old starters or younger guys. Wow, Mrazek, 21 years old, eh? However, he doesn't look like he can step in right away for us. One goalie that I'm actually wondering about right now who I was a fan of back in the day. Whoa. Matt Murray and Tristan Jari. 50 overall. Still very young at the time. Uh, yeah, I think it was... What team would be on? This guy right here. Andreas Lindback. 81 overall, 25 years of age, making 1.8... I believe he's an RFA. 
Big guy, big body. Um, can I see his stats? How is he this season so far? Has he played any games? So he's 7 and 8 right now in Tampa. Previous years, 2 and 2, 11 and 7, 1 and 1, 5 and 8, 10 and 11. I mean, I think this is a good backup to have. 25 years old. I'm wondering if they would be interested in a swap for Jonas Enroth, who is also kind of young. I just find Enroth is a little small, and I'm not really interested in re-signing him as a backup. And this is fully based on real life stuff. I'm not, I mean, in game, Enroth hasn't been that bad. He doesn't have a winning record, but first of all, one for one, I don't think they would do it. Let's see, okay. I would be interested in throwing in a pick here. Throw a second in there, maybe they'd be interested. Maybe try with a third. This guy's very aggressive. You've done all right meeting our block needs, but the value is not sufficient. So what if we change this for a late second? Bam, it gets it done, okay. So we've tackled, we've tackled the backup goalie thing. I think Lindback and, uh, and, and Miller as a tandem is actually solid. Yeah. All right. Let's sim. Uh, let's, let's sim until Christmas. Okay. So an 18 and 13 record is actually great, considering the roster that we have right now. Um, there is something funny about seeing players coming back from injury, going into changing lines, and seeing that John Scott is just slotted like a like a plug and play like anywhere that a guy's missing they dress scott they put him there doesn't matter first line center or fourth line winger christ even uh, on d they're just plugging john scott anywhere and um it's it's a little annoying uh but i mean at least it makes it easy to uh to put everything back to where it needs to be so team standings um Wow, 12th in the league, 7th in the conference. A uh, bit of work to do in front of us. Sort of sort of gaining some, you know, putting some space uh, between us and the teams behind us as well. We'll see if we can maintain that. I'm not, you know, overly hopeful, but I'm surprised. Like, we, we had Stafford injured, uh, you know, out for a couple months. We just had Vanek miss uh, a couple games. And yet we're, we managed to uh, to stay afloat here. So uh, let's go to game to point. So Ennis picking up the slack in Stafford's absence. That's actually great to see. 15-13 for 28 points in 36 games. That's that's great. Uh, Myers holding steady up there. Hodgson playing okay. And then Vanek. Um, okay, so he only missed two games. I thought he would have missed more. 13 goals, 9 assists, 22 points. It, it, again, it's not enough. What about the power play? Hodgson is our power play guy, huh? Look at that. Okay. Um, now, Erhoff is doing great on the back end. Leno as well. Ant's filling in nicely. Felino, seven goals, seven assists, and 36. I mean, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Briere, you're just a, a trash bucket, my dude. I mean, I might offload Briere at the uh, at the deadline. I, I don't think... I don't think we want to keep him along, uh, keep him around too long. Nathan Gerby, disappointment. I, I'm thinking uh, trade bait as well. John Scott, look at this guy, steps in for all those injuries and he's got, you know, 10 points on the board, almost as much as Briere and, uh, and Gerby. So this is just shocking right now. Let, let's actually sim to free agency now. I'm kind of excited to, to get going on that. Not free agency, the, the trade deadline. I'm actually kind of excited to uh, to move some parts around. Still not sure if I want to collect draft picks or just get some uh, get some players with with term on the cheap. Let's go back to our calendar. Let's go to the trade deadline. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys over here. And you know what? I'm gonna actually update my trade block so that people offer us some trades okay so this is actually a little bit more interesting here 
Um, McBain, I'm not exactly too thrilled about getting rid of. I think maybe we hold on to him. But having Briere as a moving piece here for draft picks, let's see. Maybe I would change that for a, a first round pick this year. So McBain only has the one year left, but I think he's an RFA. I don't really want to get rid of him. I don't think I do this. I'm not going to do this. Not yet. I, Briere, ugh, I don't think I do this. However, somehow I just swindled Winnipeg into giving us their first round pick for Danny Briere. So we just got rid of trash bag Danny Briere. No offense to his great, respectful, respectable career, but he's been ass in this game. They just took him for just a draft pick for this year alone. So that worked out for us right there. We just got a, a first round pick. And now Drew Stafford's coming back, so he'll be able to slot in nicely uh, back into a spot look at that there's our plug john scott playing uh second line minutes unbelievable so i can't believe that worked uh we got an extra first round pick now to play with and that uh, and to draft with so that's amazing so i'll catch you guys at the deadline whoa look at this madness Phil Kessel, a second and a third for Myers and Hodgson. Man, look, I love Kessel. I can't do this move, man. I don't think I could do this move. Why? Everybody wants Hodgson. He's technically a third line forward but he's been playing on my top six what have Kessel's uh, numbers been like oh contract so he's a US he's a pending UFA nah 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 and he's okay he's having a lackluster season minus 14 listen I can't have I can't have a free agent coming in man I'm not trading assets for a guy that might walk away it's unfortunate but no Kessel for us, boys. Maybe we pick him up in free agency, though. Okay, whoa, we got some, some waiver guys here. Daryl Powell, 76 overall centerman, salary 1 mil, fourth line. We kind of have a guy like that already. Anton Schaumann, 78 overall, depth D. Um, view player info, how old is he here? 27 years old, he is a UFA. I'm almost thinking we claim him. Why not, man? Let's claim him. Place him in the minors. I really like that move, actually. And... Yeah, I really like that move. I'm almost thinking we even bring him up. So we got uh, Piss Pissick, is that his name? Uh, send him to the minors, he's on a two-way. And then bring up Schrallman. Yeah, okay, nice. Let's finish simming this. All right, boys, so the tread deadline, the tread, what? The trade deadline is upon us. 31, 23, and eight record, despite the garbage roster that we have. Um, I'm actually thrilled with where we're at right now. However, we cannot let the success of this season blind us. Um, and make us forget what the original plan is. So currently sit, sitting in seventh in the conference, in the playoffs, um, and Islanders are one point back, Tampa four points back, Florida four points back, Washington four points back. Like nothing is done here. And I'm thinking with the trades we're probably about to do, the odds are slim that we stay in a playoff spot. Um, between now and the end of the season. Let's take a look at our stats. Uh, I mean, look, you don't want to trade guys based on performance, but I'm going to be looking at contracts and guys who are not performing right now 
as potential trading assets. So Tyler Myers, he's sticking around. He's one of the good ones. Okay, Vanek picked it up. He's almost at 20 tucks on the season, 22 apples. I'm really, I really don't know what to do with him. Um, I mean, he's that he's he's one of our top guys, man. I I just don't think it might not be wise to move him. Tyler Ennis, same deal, 37 points in 60 games. I, he's doing great. Hodgson has kind of slowed down a little bit, but he's still producing at a good clip. Lino, good, uh, you know, second or third line winger. I I still like him. Ott, I think we got to get rid of. I think he's one of those guys you can trade. Christian Erhoff's doing fine. Um, however, that contract is balls. So if we can actually move him, that would be nice. Drew Stafford, I forget. So what's his situation like? He's got two years left. So I, I want to keep Stafford on board. Uh, Nathan Gerby, he's got one year left. So Nathan Gerby, with your little measly 20 points in 50 games, I think we're getting rid of your kid. Uh, Grigorenko's still young, tons of room to, to improve. John Scott, man, you guys want him to take him. Uh, Porter, we're probably not going to resign him. I don't think we move him, though. I don't think we're going to get much value there. Um, and then uh, Strawman, I mean, you know, he's fine. He, he's fine. We're, we're not going to move him either. So we're looking okay in the, on that front. I'm thinking the assets we want to get rid of are going to be... Oh, wow, Lindback, 13 and 11. Miller, 24 and 18. Look at these goals against averages are fairly, they're fine, man. They're actually pretty good. Um, five shutties for Miller. I, I'm i happy with our goaltending. Our goaltending is in a very strong position right now. Um, so we're going to keep that in mind. Now, this is the, the harder part now is, is determining, you know, what players to go for, what to do. So on my list, I would have Nathan Gerby as a potential trade candidate. Christian Erhoff, if I can get value for him. Go back to the contract page here real quick. Um, I mean, look, if we're trying to completely clean house, I think that the play is, you know, you get rid of your Vanek, you get rid of Ott, uh, you hold on to these guys, you maybe trade Erhoff because of the contract term, which is insane. I mean, the more I think about it, like the four mil doesn't bother me. What bothers me is the term. But you can still keep him as a solid piece for like the next, you know, year, two years. His trade value is going to go down, but his potential right now is still good. He's an 83 overall, top pairing D. Maybe you don't force a trade there. Um, keep this guy. Klitsum I might trade. He was he was a healthy pickup. I don't know what he's going to want, uh, you know, next season. So I would get rid of Gerby. Strawman's a UFA. Um, I mean, I guess he's also a tradable guy. But I might also, I mean, we, we claimed him off waivers. So this is a, it's a, it's a net positive for us either way. So maybe if, if someone's interested in him, we look at maybe trading. Uh, like I said, Porter, I don't really care about. John Scott, I don't care about. He's a league minimum guy. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm thinking Gerby, Ott, um, maybe Klitsum. Felino's still young, good potential. Maybe I don't get rid of him. Uh, yeah, okay. And Briere's already gone. So, so we kind of have an idea of what we're looking at here. And now uh, it's going to be up to, to these teams here. I don't know what we can even look at. There's so many different, you know, options out there when you're rebuilding. You could trade for draft picks. You could trade for NHL-ready players. I'm actually going to jump into trading now before the trade deadline because when you're in the trade deadline, you get your phone. And if a trade offer gets declined, you turn your phone off for that hour and you start losing time. So we're going to take care of our stuff now. We're going to go to trade negotiations and see what players teams are putting up on their trading block. So, here we go. Okay, so this team, 
all uh, older players that are towards the end of their careers. We're not signing any of these guys. These guys are all younger guys towards the, end, the beginning of their careers, but I don't think we're, I don't think we're looking at, you know, a five year rebuild here, like a five year plan. I'd like to kind of get it going within the first two, three years, get back in the playoffs. So guys that can help me with that would be great. Um, okay, Murray. Murray is not bad here. 83 overall, 33 years old, one year left on his deal. That means he's a pending UFA. So I'm not overly interested in that. Um, a couple names on here that I kind of like. Yeah, they uh, teams typically just want to trade their older players or their pending UFAs. Look how old all these guys are, man. That's absurd. I, I don't want any of these guys. Anthony Mantha would be a nice trade. But I think it, you know, rebuilding team versus rebuilding team. I don't really know who can make that work. Linus Olmark. Linus Olmark. Great potential. I mean, he might be a target here. That wouldn't be bad at all. Okay, again, older guys, uh, you know, Tyler Pearson, not bad. Thing is, you don't want to move too much for young talent either. You want to kind of play it relatively safe. Again, older guys here. Um, I mean, I'm seeing decent guys, but I'm not seeing anyone that I want that's worth trading for. So looking at the guys that teams are willing to trade might not be a good option. I think we're going to have to dig a little deeper here. Okay, wait. Ben Pouliot, 81 overall. He's got one year left. Yeah. Oh. They want to get rid of Kessel that bad, eh? Him too, one year left. I don't know if I do that. I don't, and like you can't guarantee a signing. It's just not great. Okay. So, that didn't look too good right off the bat. Next thing, we go to. Um. Let's take a look at whose draft picks will be the most valued here. Team standings. Who is like dead last in the league? Toronto. Toronto and Philly. I'm kind of looking at these two teams and I'm thinking maybe, maybe we look at them and, and see what we could get going here. So that's the next step. What would it take to get Toronto's first round pick? It's a lot of value here. Would they do it for a Vanek? Probably not. I don't think Vanek alone gets it done. He's not even a player they're interested in. Neither is Gerby, who is injured now. So we might not even be able to trade him. However, we do, have, we, we do have three firsts right now. Okay, let's see. So the league would not approve it because it would set them over the cap. I... Man. What are their contracts looking like? So they got... They got Van Riemsdyk at four for five years. Lupul. I mean, Van Riemsdyk is a sick contract there. For five years, he's 24 years old. Naz is probably pending UFA or pending RFA. Grabowski, 30 years old, five mil for four years is a bit too much. They have Thomas Tatar. I'm thinking like Van Riem's like would be a nice contract. What's his production been like? I mean, he's on the worst team, so 
not too much weight towards points, but oh, 25 goals, 14 assists. I'm kind of vibing with the Van Rimmer trade here, but we'd have to give them so much here. We'd have to give them so much. They would not, I mean, a first in Van Rims like for Vanek, that's unheard of. What do they say, though? Let's see what they say. I question whether you've ever, I don't think you have. Your offer to us is filling needs we have. The value is where it needs to be all compared to what you're asking us to give up. So, okay, so now we know. They want additional pieces. Okay, now Drew Stafford sounds a little bit more interesting to get rid of. Or a Marcus Foligno. He's about to be an RFA. He's a younger guy. Okay, now this is getting interesting here. He's got value to him as well. But he could be a piece that's worth keeping. But that first round pick, baby. Ooh. Um, hmm. Yeah, we're a little uh, limited in terms of what we can offer them the other way without giving up value like this. So let's try this. Uh, the league would not approve it. If I retain cap here. If I retain... Wait, is this a... Like a I think it's because of the, the amount of people on their team. Okay, so if I did that, they would have to throw in a player as well. And this is where it gets a little tricky trying to make these multi-part trades. It's just, you know, younger guys are going to want value. Uh, and the more value there is, the harder it is to make a trade. They only want to trade Kessel, so it... I won't be able to really get. Hmm. I mean, okay. So how about this? Now I start filling in with some draft picks of my own, not Minnesota's. Maybe Winnipeg's first. Not sufficient. Maybe two first. I'm not mine. Okay. Instead of mine, instead of Winnipeg's, maybe our first. Too far off. Um, man, I mean, look at the value we'd be getting back. I think this is worth exploring. Two first. And a second. Damn. Just a touch, they said. We need to sweeten it just a touch. Okay, what about if we retain? Let's retain two mil. I mean, I could probably retain even half. Still not interested. We appreciate the changes you're making. It's still not enough. Listen, man, I'll go all the way to half the contract. Still not willing to accept the deal. I feel like I'm close, boys. Okay, we got two first next year. Maybe this one? A touch. We're, I feel like we're so close. I don't want to give up Minnesota's first because of the value on it. Maybe our first next year? There it is. There it is, boys. We just made a friggin' transaction for the first overall pick. And James Van Reeves, like, baby, what a trade that is. What a trade that I think that is amazing. I don't know. Let me know if you guys agree on this trade here. But I think this is pretty sweet. So they get Thomas Vanek that we were going to lose for nothing. They get Marcus Felino, who's a great, a great pick on our end. And then, what was it? Three first round picks. I think three first round picks. We still have the one that was most valuable to us this year. And we get Toronto's first, who they're currently fairly low in the standing. So hopefully that ends up being the first overall. And we get James Van Riemsdyk with a great contract. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. 
I'm feeling good. Okay. Next. We go to contracts. Now our move is going to be to get rid of Nathan Gerby and maybe Steve Ott. For players that have um, some term. I don't really know how to do this. I don't really know. Like, just looking at guys' contracts and seeing the, the players that they were willing to get rid of. You know what we're going to do? This is what we do. We take the guys we want to get rid of. So, for example, I you know what? I'm thinking we, we keep Airhawk. I really hate his contract. But maybe we just, like, we could trade him later down the road, you know? Like, we don't have to rush into anything right now. So, we want to trade on. David DeHarnay, four years left. That's not a bad contract or player. One for one. I mean, this is not a trade you do one for one. They did it. Okay, they did it. I, I don't know if that was the right move. I'm, I'm kind of questioning why I did this, but we're getting... You know, swapping a centerman for a centerman. He's worth a little bit more, but we do have a bit more cap space to play with. He signed for four years. He's got a decent overall. <laughs> um, look, I'm not... I'm No, you know what? I'm not upset with that. Now, Nathan Gerby, man. Get him out of here. I don't even want to... I don't want to see him. And honestly, first guy that wants him, he's yours. Give us... Uh, let's go to who you're giving away. Seth Griffith, one for one, bang, love it. And uh, I've always liked Griffith, he played for the London Knights, he played uh, for the Leafs for a touch, I don't even think he really got games in, but I'm fine with that, I just wanted to get rid of him for something, and we got a, a young guy who's uh, who's in the minors for now. So I think, I think we're looking okay now in terms of what we got. So Strawman is still a UFA. I'm thinking maybe we, we sign him. Uh, John Scott and Porter, I think we'll just let walk if we have to, or we re-sign them for the minimum. I mean, this guy we just picked up in the Leafs trade. I don't, I don't think he's, oops, I don't think he's that great. Uh, he's a UFA. He's making league minimum. Uh, let's see what he's done. Six points in 56 games. I mean, look, you got a fourth line guy. Whatever, fill up a roster spot. Now, Klitsum is probably the last guy we can get some value for. Uh, I mean, we're kind of... Maybe we do try to keep him. But uh, here, let's let's move to... Wait, hold on. One more thing I wanted to do here. Contracts. I want to see... I want to see... Deharnay. Uh, look, in real life, I hate this guy. But uh, in the game, okay, 17 points in 62. He hasn't been great. I, I just think he's a good, look at the potential too. Like, I, I just think he's a decent player to have on your roster. For now, um, you know, we can see what we decide to do. Let's move over to the trade deadline and maybe try to get rid of uh, Klitson. See what we can do. That Leafs trade has me very fired up, though, man. I'm, I think that was such a good... Okay, so he's back, so let's just send this one out. The fact that he's back, I'm actually really excited. Or, not that he's back. The fact that we made that trade has me really fired up. I do think it was uh, a solid pickup. Uh, we won't be able to trade again for the rookie draft, but don't send it today. Yeah, trade negotiations. We have two cell phones for some reason. We're going to propose a trade for Klitson. Let's see if anybody wants him. First things first. So they do. Uh, let's go. What can we get from him? Even if we get draft picks, man. I mean, we're not going to get a first. That was a, okay. Don't do that. I just wasted a, I just wasted a phone here. 
I don't want to do this every time, though, man. Ah, actually, you know what, man? Clitsum's 28. I think maybe I try to re-sign him. Like, I don't know what else I'd be looking for right now where the value wouldn't be too high. I mean, ideally, a uh, top-line guy with term, but you're not going to get some of these studs, you know? McKinnon, 67 overall. Like Matt Duchesne here, he's a pending UFA. Landis God, 21 years old. He's probably a, a, an RFA, actually. Landis God. 34 points in 63 games. Hold on a sec here. Hold on a second here. What would it take to make a Landis God trade work? Hmm. Let's take a look at some of these teams here. I'm uh, I'm starting to think there's potential for a good trade out there. Hang on, I'm a little stuck on on Landeskog right now. I mean, not not one not for him, but like, what could we do here? I don't want to give away Grigorenko. I think, I mean, Stafford we got for two more years. I don't know if I trade him for Hodgson either. Man, I don't think there's a way of getting this done. I think we're, you know what, I think we're pretty good with what we've got here, but he would definitely be a nice addition. I mean, obviously. Stafford, what is he? Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to overpay, I don't, or, you know, I don't want to get rid of a piece. Seven goals, 15, so, I mean, he's, I think he's destined for greatness. Hodgson. Hodgson. Are you destined for greatness? I mean I know in real I know the answer in real life. Kind of a four-star green potential though. And this? No. I don't know if I can make this work, boys. And he's got 40 points. I don't want to get rid of Venice. Wait! How about this guy? Would you like Deharne? <laughs> How far off would we be with this? Quite a bit, eh? Ugh. The value isn't where it needs to be at all compared to what you've been asking us to give up. So, I wonder if you revisit that and if there's a way of making it work. Oh! Toronto traded Phil Kessel and Thomas Caberlet to Montreal for first overall and a random dude. Oh, Galchenyuk sent to the minors. Okay. And this is, uh, I don't know. I don't know, boys. Oh, got a trade proposal coming in. Answer the call. Cody Hodgson for the first and a second. Nah, man. If I trade him, it's for... Uh, and a scog. And I, I mean, look, there's a bunch of other teams in the league I could be looking at. Something about Landeskog here and his age and just everything about him is just really appealing to me. I'm almost thinking we try Hodgson and Clitsum. Oh, man. Let's try it. If it doesn't work... Value is just a bit low. Okay. 
boys, we might be on the verge of getting something done here. And again, Cody Hodgson, okay? He's making, he's 24, good potential. He's RFA coming up in a year. Salary is 1.6. What's his, uh, what's his overall? So he's got 51 goals in 200 games. He's got 100, let's say 100 points in 200 games, okay? If we look at Landis Fogg, what are, what are we looking at here? Uh, okay, so better potential. He's 21. His salary is going to be higher. That's expected. 180 games, 103 points. Okay, so he's obviously like we want him. I, I want him. I want him bad. I'm kind of. I kind of have my my sights set on him right now. I don't want to get rid of either of these. Do I get rid of next year's first? I don't think that's a wise move. But if we try, okay, how about this? We try with the second. If it doesn't work, we try with next year's first. Oh my God, it worked. Oh my God, boys, let's go. Yes. Yes, boys. Hodgson and Clipsum and a second for Landis Cog. That is... That is money. That is that is so good. All right, we'll take any calls that come in, but we're we're done here, boys. Wait a minute. Oh man, uh, I don't think I like this at all. Let's see. He makes five mil. Um, he's a UFA. He, I mean, he's a great player. Don't get me wrong, but he's a UFA, and he makes five mil a year having a decent year I mean oh I can't I can't do that man I've gotten rid of some assets I can't get rid of again no guarantee you sign him I I think I no I think I declined man I think that might have been a good trade though shut down these phones are you sure you want to know this, for this round okay um, another man, two calls coming in. Ennis, Nelson, and Porter for Hemsky. And you're, okay, you're you threw in an extra guy, dude. Like, what the hell are you? What do you mean? Why would you throw? You're an idiot. Get out of my face with this. Like what? I declined your last one, dude. Stafford for a first next year. Sorry, can't do it. All right, and I think we're going to be done. I think there's one more round here. Let's see it. Tyler Ennis for a first and a third. Cannot be done. Phoenix. Lino for two seconds. Oh, that's kind of appealing. How long do I have him? I think I have him for a couple years still. Years left, four. I mean, it's a good contract. It might be a little steep, but I, I can't do this right now. I think we've gotten rid of enough assets. I think we're we're ready to uh, we're ready to kind of dial it in here, maybe. Yeah, I think we got all the pieces we want. Let's see. So centers, uh, we got a ton of centers. We got Gergensen's coming up. Who's going to be? You know what? I kind of already want to trade. Deharney. I kind of already want to trade him. I don't even remember who I got for him. Like, was this a dumb move? I traded uh, Steve Ott, right? I feel like this was not a great move for us. You know what? No, we're keeping him. We're keeping him. That's that. Hang up the phones. That was a successful trade deadline. And, uh, and yeah, we're ready to, to sim for the rest of the, our season now. Another trade from the Leafs. They acquired a first, a second, and Cassian. They flipped Vanek on us! 
they flipped them. Which actually is great news for us because we have their first round pick and if they're offloading players, that is great news. Uh, Grenier, I mean, look, a bunch of guys on waivers here. I don't think we want any of them. Man, I am, I don't know why my GM rep dropped, but I am thrilled with the moves we just made, boys. And you know what? I, we're going to keep this going until the end of the first season. Uh, um, let's, let's sim on over to the end of the season now, I guess. Let's, let's maybe check out our, our lines real quick. So we got Van Riemsdyk on the first line. Why do we have a two-way defenseman here? You know what? We don't have many centermen. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Yes. Why? So best lines. Stafford, Ennis, Van Riemsdyk, Landeskog, DeHarnay, Lino, Coletta, Porter, Scott. This third line is pure ass. Seth Griffith is being asked to come in already. But see, this is the, these are the signs of a rebuilding team. You're going to have young guys getting some minutes. These three guys right here technically probably shouldn't even be dressed. And yet they're going to be getting fourth line minutes. No. Nay. The, Grigorenko is going to get third line minutes. Porter, he's walking at the end of the year. I don't, I don't want to see him. Scott, get out of here. Let's give these guys some more time. Coletta, like you're, you're a fighter, dude. I don't really need you to do anything right now. Um, and then our D's, man. I kind of... D's nuts. I kind of like our top six. I'm fine with this. This is fine. So we're all set. Let's sim it out here. Let's sim until the... Uh, yeah, let's sim until right here. We'll take a, a, a look at where we're at at this point, and we'll go from there. Okay, fellas, so we are now in the month of April. A record of 38, 29, and 10. This is 18 more wins than the Buffalo Sabres had in the 2013-14 season. Uh, let's take a look at the standings here. I actually think we might be in a playoff spot at the current moment. Let's see. In the Eastern Conference, we are seventh with 86 points. Eight seeds make it. So we're still in a battle. Got, you know, let's say three teams chasing us from close. We've got five games left to put this away. I don't know if we get it done. Um, I mean, I'm kind of impressed that we're, it's even this close. Let's check the player stats. Um, I mean, the new additions should hopefully be, be buzzing right now. Let's take a look. Points. Bang. Van Riemsdyk hit the 30 goal mark. 21 assists in 74 games. That is great news. He's going to be here for the long haul. Tyler Myers still buzzing out there. 50 points. Uh, Tyler Ennis, 47 points. Lionel Landeskog, 15 goals, 23 assists. You know, we're hoping to get him some support next year. He'll be a year older, a year wiser, and a year improved. Stafford, 35 points in 44 games. He's got uh, probably our our best points per game average, I would say, no? Uh, Christian Erhoff still putting up numbers. The Heine, not the greatest. I'm still, I'm still iffy about this. I, I didn't, I, I thought maybe, you know, good, good face-off guy. How's his face-off percentage? Can you see that? Face-off percentage is, okay, he's, he's up there. Okay, he's a big face-off guy. So almost 50% uh, and he's taken you know, 750 face-off. So that's, he's a good face-off guy to have. Um, Grigorenko, man, actually really, man, all of our guys are pretty good on the draw. Um, anyway, so that's that's great. We're looking fine uh, up front. And then our goalies, Lindback has apparently like not played a game since the last time we checked. 31, 24, and two for Miller. Great save percentages, uh, great goals against average. I mean, our, again, our goalies are just flying right now. Our goalies have been doing great. Um, I'm really happy with where we're at there. So let's just go 
two games at a time here. Let's sim these two. If uh, we lose both, we'll check the standings. Ben Reams like our highest goal scorer. What an addition. I'm, I'm still thrilled about that. And getting the potentially the first overall. We might actually want to check where Toronto's at. We want them to finish last. Uh, looking at that injury list, so that does not look great. Do we have... So what's going on here with this? Has this guy been... WHL... Goalies, forwards... Wow, we got a couple good forwards there. Let's go a week. A week in the OHL. Um, yeah, what just happened? Okay, we lost both, which is not good. So we'll take a look, see where we're at now. Coming out on uh, on two hours on this video now. Uh, I'll, I'll, it, it'll be trimmed down a heck of a lot for you guys. What am I looking at? Uh, stats standings so we are in currently in eighth wow we're in a three-way tie right now for the last playoff spot all of us have three games left so if we take care of business we're in look at all these teams man if we take care of business we're in if we if we don't take care of business we're missing the playoffs and to be fair i wouldn't even be upset look at the end like it just, I don't think it's feasible to even think the playoffs are doable. But for the remaining uh, three games, we're going to sim the games this way. Uh, we're going to sim the, we're going to increase the speed to 6x and just watch it go. We're playing the Florida Panthers. Uh, okay, they go up nice and early. That's fantastic. Uh, okay, nothing going on the power play. They don't get anything on theirs. Another scoreless power play. They're up by two. Man. Uh, the odds are getting increasingly worse. Okay, so, oh, tie it up though in the second period. And we're going to the final 20. It's all tied up. Another power play. No tucks. They get a power play. No tucks. We get the go ahead goal. Eight minutes. Five. Final minute of play. Bang! The Buffalo Sabres come back and get the win. Who scored our goals? So Upshaw gets both for them. Porter! No, wait. That's just one goal here. Okay, sorry. Upshaw gets a goal. Porter gets a goal. Landeskog gets on the board. Kulikov gets one for them. Landeskog gets another in the third. And this is why we traded for him. Wonderful news. Uh, I could not be happier about that outcome. Now, the Boston Bruins, I believe they are, and looking at, at that right there, 86 points for the Florida Panthers, that means they were one of the teams we were tied with. I, I did not even notice that. Uh, now, Buffalo, or sorry, Boston is at 111 points, so uh, this could be difficult unless they decide to sit some guys for any reason. Uh, let's see. I mean, they're already locked in. Maybe you guys can let us walk with a nice, easy dub. I wouldn't be opposed. All right, we take an early lead. Excellent. Great first period by the boys on the road in Boston. Halfway through the game, still up one zip. Man, killing off some nice penalties here. They finally tie it early in the third. Hmm, it's gonna be down to the wire. Five minutes left, power play, they get it done. Can they hold on? Another power play, game over. Buffalo wins again? What does this mean? What does this mean? I don't think we would have locked in a spot yet. But this is big, we're at 90 points on the season. If, if those teams we were tied with, which I believe Oh wow, we get Ennis back as well. Uh, let's put Ennis, first of all, get, uh, whoops, let's get, let's get Scott uh, a nice, comfortable seat. 
in the press box. I mean, Griffith is a 63 overall. I'd rather he get some ice time. I'm actually fine with that. Uh, and then let's put Ennis as a second line center here. Gergensen's is actually, he got the call. Gergensen's got a call up. I don't think, he's a 76 already. We'll give Grigorenko uh, some third line minutes here because he's been here all season. He's been helping us to get to where we're at. I think he deserves it. But the young guy coming in, Gergensen's, that's big. That's going to be big for next season. We're going to have a nice little crew of players to play with there. Uh, what am I looking for? Standings. So this is actually quite exciting. We're still in that final spot. And we got one game remaining. Islanders, Pittsburgh, if, uh, if we lose this game and the Islanders win, we're out. So this is actually extremely exciting. And now please tell me, we're going to do this slowly, okay? We're looking for the Toronto Maple Leafs to be in dead last because we want that first overall pick. Okay. 21, 22, 23. Do we all, I think we already have this one, actually, so that's going to be a good pick. Phoenix. Philadelphia was the other team we were worried about that, we, that, that was also close to the bottom. Calgary. Edmonton. Dallas. This is like a draft lottery right now. Philadelphia and Toronto with one game left. Oh, shoot. I think if they tie... Philly actually sneaks into that last spot. Oh no. Regulation wins. Toronto has 32. Philly only has 23. Yeah, if Toronto wins their game and Philly loses, we lose the first overall pick. So let's play this out. Sim the game. We need a win here to make the playoffs. Let's see how she goes. One zip Detroit, and they're they're a powerhouse in this league. Two zip Detroit early. Are the hopes slipping away? Three zip Detroit midway through the first. Four zip Detroit. Ryan Miller, what are you doing? Lindback is now in, I believe. Yeah, Lindback is in the net. All right, Buffalo gets one back. They got two back, one on the power play there. Nice. It might be too little too late, though. A huge onslaught from uh, from Detroit. Oh, wow. They make it interesting, though. Ten minutes left to tie it up here. Ah. That's going to do it. Oh, boy. They make it close again. And there's no... No late game heroics for Buffalo here. Unfortunate. So now it's all going to depend on the New York Islanders. And a double whammy if Toronto wins. Oh boy, here we go. Let's now check those standings. It's taking forever to send the league games here. Let's take a look. Four points for Van Riemsdyk on that, uh, in that season finale. Have they done it or have they missed out? Oh no, it looks. Oh no, we just missed the cut. Oh my gosh, boys. We needed a win there. We didn't get it. Heartbreak in Buffalo. Heartbreak in Buffalo. But with so much hope on the horizon here. And this could be, this could be the killer right here. This could be killer when I go down. If we better see Philadelphia's name. Here we go. Let's go, boys. Oh, my God. So with the final spot remaining in the playoffs, falling, slipping through our fingers, we do get the solace of knowing that we're going to get the first overall pick at the draft. That is unbelievable. What a season it's been, man. Wow, that was exciting. All right, boys, look at this. 40 wins under a belt. That's huge. All right, boys.
so that's going to do it for season one of our Buffalo rewriting history series. Next episode, we'll have the free agency period, the draft, and season two, which hopefully uh, will yield better results. But we're going to have a nice, a nice crew to work with. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. Feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you on the Pepperdy Flip. Peace.